Hi, I've got a number of strategies that can help you to improve your SAT scores. This is my strategy number three, smart guessing. So if we knew how to do every single SAT problem and never ran out of time, we would never have to guess. But there's some times where we get stuck on a problem and then we need to guess on it. But rather than just taking a random guess, uh, there's ways to make those guesses a little smarter and have a better percentage chance of getting the right answer. So we're going to take a look at five sample problems um, from the official practice SATs to take a look at that strategy a little deeper. Okay, so I've got five problems picked out from the official SAT practice test that are going to help us show how to utilize smart guessing. Um, and again, smart guessing is used when we don't know how to figure out the problem or uh, we're running into con time constraints. So in this problem, we're looking for the value of x. So let's take a look at this one right here. So if we look at 90 degrees, clearly x is going to be bigger than 90 degrees, which eliminates a and b right away. So we're either looking at c or d. So if we went no further and take, take a quick guess on this, um, we're already down to a 1 out of 2 rather than 1 out of 4. Much, much better chance. And then if you want to take a look at those answers a little further, if this was 100, it'd be 100 plus 100 plus 100 plus 45, which would be 345. And then if you put 105, you get 360. That 360 may seem like it makes more sense, um, which is actually the way you do it. But even if you went no further, just to have a choice of 2 rather than a choice of 4 gives you a much better chance of getting more of those answers right in the long run. All right, so let's try to focus in on this one now. Um, we want the measurement of angle B. So what I'm going to do is um, we know what right angles and 45 degree angles look like. So I'm going to make a I'm going to make a right angle right here. So we're trying to find this angle here, and I'm going to make a right angle here. So what that's done is it shows that it's clearly it's bigger than 90. So we can get rid of 90. And we're going to find out how much this is. So if we look here, um, let's compare this angle to this. And we can see that this angle appears to be bigger than this angle. If they were the same, they'd be 45 each. But since this seems bigger than this, because we're cutting that 90 degree angle, um, so this is going to be greater than 45. So when we add those up, we've got 90 over here and something that's greater than 45. So we're going to be greater than 135, which will lead us to 150 as the answer. Okay, in this, pro in this problem we've got populations um, going from 2010 to 2015, and they're the same in 2015, and it's telling us that one of them starts um, in 2010 at 120,000 and is going up by 20%, and then the other one is going down by 10%, and they end up being the same over here. Okay, so if 120,000 is going up and getting us somewhere, then if we had anything less than 120 going down, they would never be the same over here. So anything less than 120,000 does not make sense. Now, these percentages are not um, hugely apart from each other. So one's going up by 10, one, I mean, one's going down by 10, one's going up by 20. Um, we wouldn't expect it to be a factor of 2 here to make that happen. So 240 is just way too big for this. So we can eliminate 240 by it being too big. And then that gets us in at the answer as C, which is actually the correct answer. Okay, in this example, we're trying to find the value of 3x. Well, if this is 2x and 3x, we're trying to find the size of this angle. So let's do some Estimating, let's put a 
make a right angle here. And then um, let's take that right angle and um, split it in half and see where our 45 would be. And what that tells us is that this angle here is going to be more than um, 45 degrees. So we can get rid of these two examples, these two right here. Um, and then the difference between 54 and 72, you could look at it and say, well, 72 would be much closer to 90 degrees. So if you just want to eyeball it and say that 72 is out, but you could also say, all right, well, we're adding up, um, we're adding up the 45 um, plus an additional amount here. And how much is that amount? So if this 45 and this, that's about another 10 because this gets us 45 here, that's about 10 or 11, right? So if we're adding up our um, 45 and another 10, a good estimate is 55 and that's pretty close to C. All right, but because they're so different, we don't even have to get to that level of detail. Because the answers are so widespread, we can just look at it and say um, 18 and 36 are, are out immediately because it definitely is bigger than 45, and it looks way smaller than 72 because 72 would be much closer to 90 degrees. And that gives us a good guess and the right answer on C. Okay, and on this one, um, we've got... Um, 51 cent coins stacked up. Um, it gets us about four inches tall. That's about four inches, three and seven eighths. And we're going to eight inches. So if the size doubles, then this is going to approximately double. Now, here they're asking you for an estimate anyways, but this would be another thing you could use. If they had the exact answers, you would know that it would need to be somewhere around 100 as well. So if it had exact answers, you could do the same logic and find whichever one was closest to um, 100. But 100 is going to be our answer here just by um, making a good, smart guess at it. Thanks for watching, and if you have an SAT coming up, good luck. I'm going to continue to add SAT material, so if you'd like to subscribe right up here, you can get notification of when new material comes out, and I've got some more stuff for you to watch right here. Thanks again for watching, and please come back soon.